Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the RC Explain channel. Now in today's video, we're gonna be doing something very different. Normally what we're doing is we're talking about the theory of radio control components so that we can figure out how we can get our systems to be reliable. Well now we're gonna take one of our radio control batteries. I got one right behind me. We're gonna take this tiny little battery and see if it starts up the car that is right behind me. So this is my 2005 Toyota Corolla XRS. It has a 1.8 liter engine and it obviously operates on the typical 12 volt lead acid. A three cell lithium polymer battery pack measures up at 11.1 volts nominal and an absolute maximum of 12.6 volts. Now this works out perfect for us because a 12.6 volt lithium polymer battery pack actually has the same voltage as a fully charged lead acid battery right at 12.6. Six. That would be considered as a 100% charged lead acid battery. So there's a couple things that we need to do prior to actually getting this thing to start. And that is remove the alternator wires off of the alternator. We don't want to charge that battery pack as soon as it starts. So taking those alternator wires will completely prevent that. If we didn't end up doing that, we would charge that battery beyond its 12.6 volt max rating and that would surely not be good. We're gonna cover this in a few different steps. We're gonna first end up taking the battery out of the car. Then we're gonna take that alternator cables, remove all of those. Then we're gonna go and put our lithium polymer battery pack into the car and then lastly, we're gonna try and see if this pack can actually fire up this car. Leave your predictions in the comment section below letting me know if this lithium polymer battery pack is going to fire up this car. A couple specs on this battery. I told you it's a three cell, 11.1 volt nominal. It's a 2200 milliamp hour. So this is considered quite small in RC. It's not obviously the smallest, but it's definitely a popular battery pack used in RC planes. It has a 45 C discharge rate. If you don't know what any of those parameters mean, you can simply go and search them within this channel. We explain everything in significant detail. So let's not waste any time. Let's go ahead, head over to the battery pack and start removing and taking that out. All right guys, we're gonna start on the battery first. What I'm gonna do as a first step here is I'm gonna pull the negative battery post off. The reason why I want to do this is because I don't wanna work on the positive first and then up hitting it with the wrench on any part of a metal component of the car because that negative terminal is connected in line with all the metal in the vehicle. So let's go ahead and remove that, that negative post off first here. So I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter socket here and the car is essentially metric which is beautiful so it just needs to loosen up and then i can pull this guy off i'm going to tuck him behind this wire here and the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to pull off my positive see my wrench is actually hitting this red piece here if i didn't have that negative off i would run the risk of shorting out those posts so now i have all the battery connectors off. I want to keep this guy shoved in a corner so he doesn't end up causing issues. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull both of these connectors or fasteners off so I can pull the battery mount off and then pull the battery out. So I'll, I'll start on the bottom one here. This one's got a long way to go. Loosen up the top. Once this is loose, I might be able to just pull it out. So I got that one unhinged on the bottom. It's got a little anchor bar that anchors it on the bottom end. And then this guy has to just be run all the way out. Okay, now that that's off, I'm gonna pull it all the way up, out from the bottom and out. And then I'm gonna place it off to the side. We don't need this for a long while. Next thing to do is to simply pull the battery out Keep this post off. These things are really light. They're easy to get out. Okay, so now that we have the battery off, we want to go and disconnect that alternator. So let's go over to the alternator and get that figured out. Okay, now that we're over at the alternator, we got one power cable to pull off and then we're gonna go and pull a connector off and that will take the alternator out of play here. So let's go ahead and start off on that one fastener here at the top. So I'm gonna take this guy off. It's just a single, again, it's 10 millimeter. 
everything's 10 millimeter that we're gonna be touching today, it's great. Break that free, hopefully I can run it off by hand. So I got that nut off, I'm gonna place that nut off to the side so I don't lose it. Place it on the battery pack, it's in the film so now I can't forget about it. And I'm gonna pull this cable off. Now I wanna hide this cable off to the side so it cannot come in play. I'm gonna put it up against some plastic, it's jammed up there, it won't come off. And the next part that I'm gonna focus on here is that cable. So here I'm just pressing a tab really tightly and trying to pull it off. Okay, so that wasn't that bad. Uh, so there we go, we have that power cable off and we got that other cable and connector off as well. So now that alternator should be completely disconnected from our electric circuit here. So now we can go back on the battery side and connect up our lithium polymer battery pack. Let's go do that. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and connect our power cable up. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna take our positive lead that's coming right off of the battery, our lithium polymer battery pack. We're gonna take this terminal and we're gonna connect it up to our positive terminal here. And then we're gonna take our negative, do the exact same thing, connect it up with our negative terminal. And then the last step to do is to place our lithium polymer battery pack right into its lipo safe bag so that if anything were to happen, it's not gonna catch on fire the rest of the vehicle and the garage here. So let's go ahead and start off by disconnecting this positive connector on the side. We loosened it up. Now all we're doing is we're gonna go and take this all the way off. So I got it somewhat loose from breaking it free for the battery and now it looks like it's gonna come off by hand, which is great. I'm gonna pull the power cable off. This is for a aftermarket stereo. I guess it's the amplifier that I have under the seat. I didn't install it. So now I don't wanna lose these. I'm gonna place the nut back on so I don't lose it. I'm gonna move on now to the negative side. So here we have our negative side. I'm gonna disconnect this guy. Hopefully I can run it all the way off by hand. Looks like it will work. A Little bit of resistance near the end here. Okay, so the first one I'm gonna start on here is the negative terminal. So here I got my, my connector. I wanna use the black on the negative side. So here we go, we're connecting up the black. I'm gonna run the nut back on all the way. I'm gonna go finger tight and then I'm gonna torque it with the quarter drive wrench or socket ratchet. It looks like it's pretty close. Gonna do the same thing on the other side here. Gonna run this on the side. Take my nut, bring it all the way in. Fasten it until it bottoms out, just like we did on the other side. Get this in the right direction and tighten her down. That's good enough, nice and tight. Get this nice and tight as well. Feels good. So now everything's tight. We wanna make sure that these connectors are not gonna be in an area that's going to cause any type of short as we're trying to start this car up. So here our negative looks fine and our positive, we're gonna leave it here. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna connect up our battery pack while I have everything in sight. And then once that battery is connected up, then I can feed the battery pack into our lipo safe bag. So I have this wrapped with a plastic bag just because I don't want it to get dirty. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is going to power up the car. So this is the first test of when or what is going to happen right here. So that car is now live. We got the connection established. There's no fires yet. There shouldn't be. We are still operating on a three cell lithium polymer battery pack, which works out to 12.6 volts when fully charged. This is awfully close to that 12.6 volt mark. So now that I have that set up, what I wanna do is I wanna carefully feed our LiPo into the bag. See how I can do this. Snug it in, keep everything tight. Now the next thing I wanna do is I wanna get that positive connector in there as well. It's not working. All right, I'm gonna try this again. Place the battery pack in the bag. All 
Okay, so it's a little awkward. Definitely not made for this. Okay, so now I know this is not gonna end up hitting something. It's, it's fairly safe here. The next thing that we can do is fire up the car. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. Okay, so here we are. Now we're gonna fire up the car. So I'm gonna try and use this camera and focus on something that we get on the dash. There we go, turning it on to the on position. So there we have all of the dash lights lit up. Next thing to do is step on the clutch and turn the key and see if she boots up. So here we go. And it fires up with ease. It actually fires up better than when I have the, the lead acid battery in it. It's incredible. <laughs> All right, so let's try that again. Keys on, clutch down, turn the key. There we go. Tiny little battery starting up a 1.8 liter Toyota engine. There we go. Hey guys, I want to show you the exact reason why you don't need to go ahead and try this on your own vehicle. This car is so good that it outlived its own odometer. Check this out. If I cycle through the trip meters here and land on the odometer, it has stopped at exactly 299,999 kilometers, just shy of the 300,000 mark. If you own a 2003 to 2008 Toyota Corolla, Matrix or Pontiac Vibe, your odometer has either stopped at this number or it will stop at this number when you either reach it in the kilometers or miles that your car's odometer is measured in. I have no idea why the next value, the three digit here, does not come for free on a digital screen. However, I'm kind of stuck with it and there's not much that I can do. Now check it out. This is exactly why I absolutely love this car. Take a look at that tachometer and it's 8,000 plus RPM red line. Having an 8,000 plus RPM red line is an absolute blast to drive. All right, now that we just fired up the car using one of the tiniest lithium polymer battery pack that we use in radio controlled air cars and airplanes, as well as even helicopters. So now the only thing left to do is to pull out all the components, put the alternator back on. We're not going to go and record that. It's going to be simple, just the reverse process of what we did and we're done. So there you go, guys. Now you know that a battery pack as small as your hand used for radio control vehicles can start up a full size car. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like the video if you do, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so I can see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching.